Um, okay, so Casey, we, we just finished the run of Dutch Courtesan, and you were playing Mary Foch. I was the the ball. How, <laughs> I, we never. I can't, everyone's pronounces it differently. How? Yeah, um, I think. I remember originally having this discussion with Mike where we said, oh, is it Mary Fock? And it's supposed to be a kind of wordplay. And we were told adamantly at the beginning that it wasn't. And then we've slowly brought him round, but I don't think we told all of the cast that we were doing that. So it's still f like faux or fo to some people. And then some people are trying to be quite uh, articulate with it and fock uh, instead of just being about fock. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so that <laughs> was always quite interesting. Um, and I, I say the, my, my, my own name quite a lot, actually, in one speech, so I think it changes every time I say it. Um, but yeah. Cool. So, um, do you want to say, just very briefly, a little bit about the character who you play? I mean, you're, yeah. you play a, quite a pivotal role in many ways, although you're also at the sidelines yeah. more, all for, for most of the time. So, um, um, it, it's quite a, it, it's a, it's a great character to, to play, first off. I, um, Really enjoyed it, and Anna, who played Francesina, is absolutely amazing and a really dear friend of mine. So it's been lovely working with her. Um, it's quite interesting looking at the role of the the kind of the brothel madam uh, in this case because she does have so much control in those first two scenes, and you see her with Coppola de Moy, her her boyfriend, uh, and controlling her uh, prostitute Anna uh, or Francesina in um, in the next scene, and then she starts to dwindle. And I think the way that I've worked it out in my head is that. It's from the point just after um, Freeville's left the stage and Francesina slapped him around the face. And uh, I think at that point she, she reaches to comfort Francesina and Francesina just shrugs it off. And I think that's when Mary's mind is made up that she is no longer um, kind of something to be concerned about because she probably will drive herself into her own end. Mm -hmm. Um, and for that reason, I think that's why she then begins to kind of very much take a step back because she, uh, it, it, for example, in the execution scene, it, it's just a simple shake of the head and leaving her um, because I think Mary was very aware that that was going to happen and she mm. could probably drive herself to death yeah. uh, by herself without any help from anyone else. I think as a, that character between Mary Fox and Francesina is the most volatile relationship yeah. it seems to in that they both rely on each other. Oh, I mean, goodness, you know, yeah. one, one is the madam, but Francesina is her yeah. star. star um, um, employee, and um, but they have it has to both kind of keep her um, in a good on side and a good mood, but also oh, control goodness, her wild yeah. tempers. And um, that's a very difficult thing to to play. Those <laughs> kind of um, arguments or of any sort are very yeah. difficult uh, to make sure. So I was wondering, there are a couple there are a couple of scenes where yeah. um, are slightly underplayed, but I've got a, sort of a quieter scenes, other ones which are out and out rows. Yeah. Do you want to talk a bit about? You have a process of what you did, I mean, how you yeah. approached us from the beginning all the way through, how you got to what ended up being one of the most the striking moments of the play, yeah. as, you, as the um, two of you just stormed sort of on stage. <laughs> raged on yeah. stage. Yeah. Um, I think uh, when I when I first read it, I definitely didn't see it as it is now performed or, or was performed. Um, we first had a rehearsal in the cinema, which is a very small space. It was just at the front, and it was a, a, right at the end of last term with uh, Freeville and, and Malara as well. Um, and I remember it was just very gentle, and it was much more, uh, I think, it's before we'd done uh, kind of a really, let's look into what's going on here. And my, at that time, my interpretation of a brothel mistress was one that accommodated everyone, and that was she accommodates customers and accommodates prostitutes. Um, and it was really interesting to kind of talk with Mike through that to actually go, actually, no, she can get another prostitute if she wants one. I mean, Francestina is, um, is her star prostitute. Uh, but at the same time, if she does die or go mental, she can quite easily pick someone else up um, off the street and breed them up as well. Um, so it went from being quite a soft, gentle, don't be upset that your love is, uh, is betrothed to someone else, to uh, a really interesting kind of, um, you belong to me and you're being out of order, uh, and I will tell you that. Um, there was a really interesting rehearsal, I, I think, at the beginning of this term, kind of halfway through the process, um, where uh, Mike said, I just want you to both storm onto stage, and Anna, you can stop when you like, but Katie keeps storming towards her. So I did so, and, and we kept going, and we're storming across the stage. Anna turns around and literally goes to hit me. Of course, 
she's the sweetest girl in the world and would never hit me so I should have known that but the, the like sheer ferocity of it sent me off stage I suddenly turned around and went I can't do that went off stage and was genuinely fearful that I was going to get a black eye and Mike said that's what we want that's exactly what we want we want the both of you to be so ferocious that you will not back down if she goes to hit you and if she did you would hit her back um, if that happened of course mm. we chose not to, <laughs> to throw any punches um, and then I think from that point that gave us a really nice starting point and um, and we've absolutely loved doing that scene myself and Anna because it is just you start on such an energy that you've got um, you've got places to go with it and mm. and to play with it and um, I think the shape of the scenes a really interesting one in comparison to uh, a few others because it does start on such a high uh, bam 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 kind of shouting at each other and then kind of peruses to this um, Mary Fock manipulating Frank with kind of uh, teasing her about the secrets that she knows about her and uh, manipulating her about the um, the fact that she is she she made Frances Gina. Um, so it's 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 a, my favourite scene, um, and and in comparison to the later scenes with Mary Fock that are quite kind of tame, I, I think, uh, as I said before, that that's just because she was willing to fight at that stage in the relationship, mm. and and by further on in the play, she is no longer willing to fight for her because she sees her going off the rails. I think both in in that scene, which once you have your the argument, you go and sort of you know. I said, well, who are you, Mary Fuck? Am, am I called bored? Yeah, that, yeah. That bit, and you have that long sort of speech, but when you, and when you turn and become mm. uh, pointing out every single thing that you've done for her, yeah. really twisting the knife at every, uh, every point. Yeah. That's quite a difficult speech. Yeah. Um, and and because, partly because there's all sorts of things, sort of things which don't have currency now. I mean, mm. you know, the, the honest flat caps, wealthy flat oh, caps. Oh, yeah. Um, all the different, you know, the, the yes, it's, it's a court men and all mm. that. How did, did you find that was an inhibition to start with? How do you get over that kind of thing? Yeah. Or was it just a matter of finding ways of saying them nastily? Or what, I mean, how did you yeah, go about I, that? I think that... Uh, I think the language is, is probably the biggest barrier in, in Marston. Um, I think it was a challenge for all of us to kind of understand the language because it is, you're, you're right, it's kind of, a lot of it is foreign to us um, nowadays. And I think what really helped, Mike was phenomenal at just really laying down, um, this is what that means and this is the equivalent. We're not going to swap it in for an equivalent because you can say it in a way that suggests it to the audience. And um, it was really nice to... Uh, to have a director that was so solid and confident in the language and in the text that he knew that he would get his actors to a place where they would speak it as if it was common, uh, you know, a colloquial kind of language. Um, and I think for that speech particularly, uh, it, it was just the build-up that I'd had before and then I had to relate that to things in my own head. So, um, who was that paid the apothecary is a reference to you've probably had an STI of some sort and I most certainly was the person that hid that kind of and sorted you out and stopped you from dying um, so it is it, that you know and you need to be done with a bit of a tease and it's a bit funny but it's the the switch that then then goes on to but who brought you to the fact that you are able to live and have these jewels and have these nice dresses uh, with honest flat caps and wealthy flat caps and and I think that was just um, that the way that we got to that was through Mike being yeah a, a, an amazing director that kind of just drove it home that you need to take a different tone um, when you're changing into because it's not everything's I'm being nasty to you it's you've got to have a reason for it and it is you know um, the the reference to uh, STIs and uh, the apothecary and whatnot um, was a much more kind of slightly jokey to almost warm her up to I'm just going to tease you a little bit and then the kind of punch is no no I've made you and if mm. you leave you will have nothing um, so yeah I, I think that's how we, we came to that point um, okay great. Is, that, is that okay? yeah, yeah of course it is great well, let's lovely. Do that. thank you lovely lovely